Tuesday the 18th December 2012 and uh, we're just looking through the door of the RPRA one loft race, Yearling loft. It's a glorious sunny day, makes a change. There's a forecast for the next couple of days is uh, heavy rain. I thought I'd take this opportunity, as promised, to uh, do a little video for you. As you can see, the cocks and hens are all together at the moment. Um, basically, this is to keep them happy uh, for the breaking over process, which will happen in the first couple of weeks next year of January. Uh, what also we don't want to do is split them too early and get the hens uh, turn into lesbians and you know, causes all sorts of problems when we come to race when they're split properly um, in the uh, middle of March. Um, pigeons will be flowing on the split door system. Uh, basically they'll be sort of paired up may go down on a set of eggs they won't be allowed to rear um, then we'll take the hens away let the cocks desert the eggs and then they're on uh, the split door we let together on basketing night as soon as they're together and in the boxes in the pivot boxes that's when we shall uh, basket them for the first race and so on. When they come back from that race they'll be left together for the rest of the day and then they'll be split first thing the following morning and they'll be on that cycle over the next six weeks. And it really has worked well for us over the last four or five years with the yearling teams we've managed to come first section, second open BBC and also we've had first section, second open National Flying Club just over 8,000 pigeons. Uh, we've also topped the Fe Seven Valley Federation and there was 1,800 pigeons in that race um, from Lesse. So these pigeons are proved they can race against the best and beat the best. This year um, for 2013 we've got a really nice set of pigeons they've gone through the malt very well and uh, most of the pigeons are malted out fully or they're on their last flight. They're all in good health, fine fettle, I haven't had any problems. Uh, we've got about, well we've got 240 in the loft We've roughly got 50-50 cocks and hens, which is good. I thought on this nice day you can see the quality of the pigeons. Let's see if you can spot any of yours, even though most of you haven't seen them since youngsters. Just sort of go around with the camera a bit and see if you can. It's just nice to have a glance at them. Nice blue pie there. We've got every breed and every colour under the sun in this loft, obviously, because they're from 400 different lofts that have entered the original entry. Um, and this is what makes it interesting with one off racing is because they're all fed the same, trained the same. Uh, it's pigeons that adapt to this system that come to the front. If they got it, um, if they're made of the good stuff, then they come through. Um, I cleaned the loft out this morning. I put some fresh Orbeos in the perches and um, I'll put this Orbeos in 
by once a week at the moment through the winter. Uh, they're cleaned out about every three days through the winter. And then once um, we start training the birds, they're, they're cleaned out every day. So we can keep an eye on um, their drop-ins. And how if they're coming into form or if they're going out of form. Um, we just got the Simpo Pippo boxes in the loft. So we can put those across. Cock can take his hand in there. We put a bowl in there. We can play about. You know. Um, I, I like Pippo boxes. Problem is, if you get the Woodward boxes, you know, uh, with this quantity of pigeons, you can get a lot of fighting in them. You get two or three cocks in the back of a box. Uh, when you got uh, 240, then um, you get problems. Whereas this way, they can get out the boxes easy. Uh, we've got over 300 perches in the loft, V perches and uh, Pippo boxes. Uh, grizzle there, frill front. A nice uh, dark grizzle there. A couple of fights. I had a bath this morning. I put a bath in each aviary and they just love washing out. Um, he's picked up my eye, a cracking mealy cock there. Which is very happy and content, and that's the main thing because. Happy pigeons win races. If you got them happy, motivated, the right weight, the right loft, the right feed, when it all comes together, you get good results. Very unusual sort of black pie cock there. A difficult year this year these did with the young birds, they, um, with the weather and everything else, but they still went over 200 miles. They still had to contend with 30 odd, 40 training tosses with racing as well. As yearlings, they'll be raced between 3 and 400 miles for the final. And when they're up in Scotland, the best come through. So rough terrain. You got pigeons that are your small cocks, you got your big cocks, and it's just a variety of some colours. got this section on the end as well where they can go out into a into a grilled aviary as well. So I open up on nice sunny days. A nice uh, silver hen there. It's quite rare to have silvers in this lot. Um, lovely silver hen. Check a white flight. It's really going to be exciting for us when we start uh, racing these, training these. It'll probably be uh, end of March, early April. I'm going to see if I can give them a bit more training this year. Or next year, shall I say, for the first race. See if I can get sort of 20 spins into them, and then we'll have the first race 
Uh, I think at the moment provisionally we we'll go three times on our own and then three times with another organisation, whether it be with the South West Lyric Club, I don't know at the moment, still early days. It's red cock there. It's a lovely pigeon, a dark checker grizzle. Reminds me of a pigeon uh, that Mike Chadwick pulled in a few years ago. That won the ace pigeon. It's a Z ring, that's all I can see. She's a nice pigeon. They're all nice pigeons, but at the end of the day, there's only one winner on the final race. see they're very happy. At the moment they're fed on a just a general mix and uh, now they come through the malt. Uh, add some barley they'll be on 40% 50% barley. We'll train them on that and then uh, in, you know as the uh, distances increase protein will go slightly higher carbohydrates and fats but uh, just basically now on a maintenance diet because uh, not doing any work. It's just a case of keeping them in, getting them through that nice malt. So they're going to be ready for what's ahead of them. This game, one off racing, you need a bit of luck. In any racing, you need a bit of luck. Whether it be, you know, good training tosses, you get hawk attacks. Um, you know they come across bad weather but uh, you know we try and do our very best for the pigeons and always will do an unusual colour there that one there nice cock with a, with a blue splash on his back Any of you seen the winner yet? Take some picking, I think. Come on, then. Come on. This time of year, they're only fed once a day, which they've already had their, their main feed. Uh, when they start racing, then they'll be fed twice a day, depending on the weather and the work they're having and everything else, but um, you know, with any athletes, you need them the right weight, the right condition. Uh, they're fed on uh, Buxton's, which is sponsors of this race. Timed in with Unicorn ETS. say I, I really uh, I'm a fan of the Orbios deep litter method uh, by putting it on the perches after a few days they flick most of it on the floor which then obviously goes down as the deep litter I find also if you refresh it just before you know in my own loft I use Orbios and I find if you refresh it just before the racing starts it will actually knock them off form so it's best to leave it down, uh, not take all of it out, just leave most of it down, just take the top off and just put a fine layer on top. That way you're sort of keeping the good bacteria that's built up over the years in the loft and uh, it's like giving them a natural probiotic at the same time. As long as it's dry, the dust uh, goes down to the bottom of the Orbios. I've uh, been using it about 15 years now myself and uh, I've tried all different things sand, paper, different types of uh, horse bedding, what have you, straw, you name it but um, I've always come back to the Orbios hemp bedding 
that pigeon there, this blue here, he's uh, well, he's turned around now, but he's got a one white tail in the back of him, and as you can see there. So when he when he uh, pitches on the loft, I always know this pigeon.